Welcome to Bond SEX. This is where X marks a spot to get you on the top. This is Lance the Barkenstock Bounty Hunter back at you again with another great plays of the week. This is week eight, February 20th through February 24th. It's a holiday week, so we have President's Day today, and so it's going to be a short trading week. And typically on short trading weeks, it can be a little uh, can be a little tragic. Um, so look for some 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 manipulation happening this week. And so um, as you're if you're new to the channel, this is my scanner um, where I scan stocks over the weekend, and I look for trend, true value, and I'm looking for great stocks. And so this is kind of like my roadmap. This kind of like X marks the spot for me, as I say, gets you on the top. So this is. Uh, kind of the X uh, to mark the spot. And then I go to the charts to see uh, if the spreadsheet really pulls out some good stuff for me the way I think it does. And so um, so let's get started. Um, I typically go through, if you're new to the channel, I typically go through the uh, NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. We like to look at the markets first to see where the markets are trending, where they're going help us get into a better price point for stocks that trade on those markets. And so we're looking at the NASDAQ here. And as uh, as expected last week, uh, pulled down right into where I expected to be. Um, we see a support on the eight-day uh, EMA here, uh, which is the Williams Alligator, um, eight days advanced to the future. And so we see that touchdown there. Um, and so it's important to know because that could be a flag that this could come down and touch down on the 13 day uh, EMA as well um, coming soon. So we see a little bit of a dip into the market um, on the NASDAQ in the last few weeks. And so it's, it's pretty normal. I think uh, it's been overextended quite a bit. We see the MACD pulling back down as well and the momentum falling as well. And so expect by Friday, the market to be pretty flat coming in, like it's a short week, but by Friday, anywhere between 11655 to about 11838 So somewhere around that range by Friday, I wouldn't expect a lot of fireworks in a short week. Um, if we do see fireworks, they'll probably be more than likely on the downside of things. And so that's what my expectation would be. So that would be a great buying opportunity this week for long-term investors and so let's look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Very similar. And this is what um, I, the purple lines here is what I call the cake range. This is the stronghold of the stock. This is where the price wants to be, right? So it wants to be in this range. Um, we see when it comes out of this range, it pulls back in. When we see it's below this range, it pulls back. So this is kind of the balance of the market here. And so we see the New York Stock Exchange kind of weighing heavy on the top end of that cake range which is which is showing a lot of resistance and so we see that pulling right back down and we last week it came right into zone where i expected to be and here's a flag down here we see this come down and support on the blue which is a 13-day ema advanced into the future we see that touchdown is a that's a flag down that this could pull back down quite considerably over the next week or two and so I expect by Friday, the New York Stock Exchange to be somewhere around the 15,711 um, to around the 15,921. We see the teal across the green. We see the green like it's going across the red. And the next thing would be the red across the blue. And at that point, well, we would be down into a bearish trend. And again, we look back, uh, we're looking at a one year, one day, and we see that um, this, this is actually a little overextended as well. And so we have some room for this one to fall. New York Stock Exchange has been very bullish for a while. So it's, it's it's destined for this one to come back, relax a little bit, and probably support here on the 180-day SMA uh, here in the next couple of weeks. But we see the MACD pulling back, and the momentum does not look well at, at all uh, as far as this one looking up. So expect, excuse me, expecting a short week for this one to uh, definitely pull back some. So again, it creates a great buying opportunity for us in stocks that trade on the New York Stock Exchange. So let's look at the plays of the week. Got a couple of them, quite a few this week, and so we'll kind of run through them, try to run through them pretty fast. Uh, so CVS comes in uh, pretty pretty good this week at a trend of a two. Again, a two trend is a decent trend up. 
Uh, we typically like to see um, you go from a zero to a two to a four to a six to an eight, hopefully in that order. So um, we want to see this one grow from a two to a four. So this one is comes in 56 cents overpriced this week, true value of $88.02. So let's look at CVS. And haven't called out CVS before. Just recently started scanning the stock. But let's look at a one year, one day, and uh, kind of look at it overall, big picture, what's going on with this stock. And so um, zoom in just a little bit more. All right. So we see one year, one day. Um, this one had a high of 109.69. Uh, we see back on March 18th of last year. And so we see this one has, it was well above what I call the cake range. Again, this is the purple lines here and here. So the price wants to be in between here. We see this well above, way overpriced. So this price fall right down very nicely, right below uh, the cake range. And we see this one built right back up and come above again. And then back down and you see this pattern here back and forth. So from a technical standpoint, um, this creates a great buying opportunity for us this week. Um, the MACD looks very good. It's underneath the right, right at the midpoint here. See a, see a build up and a potential pull back there. And then Mac, uh, the momentum looks a good and point up as well. And right at right above the midpoint. So great opportunity as well. So we see this one again here, here, see how it gets below. Um, back in June, we see back in uh, October, um, and then we also see now it's been below here since, um, looks like it pulled back and got a low of 84.60 on the 6th, and so we see a lot of manipulation. If we look at the white bars in the background, this is volume, right? So we see all this volume picking up, and what that is is a lot of trading going on at a lot of cheap prices here. So when you see that volume, which moves way before price, be expecting the price to move um, pretty soon. So we see the volume check, and we see the momentum check, we see the MACD check, and we see all this pointing in the right direction for us. So let's look at um, price point this week. So 86.16 is a great price point for me this week. It's not too far from the low of 84.60. Um, which it had um, on the 7th. And we definitely saw earnings report come out and they actually beat earnings report by about seven cents. Um, this one does have uh, dividends at 60, 60, uh, 60 and a half cents um, slide here. So we also have wave count of minus two. So it's two waves extended below where it needs to be. So um, definitely great opportunity for this one to go long term. So I'm going in with 86.16 this week with CBS. Next on the list, we're going to Snapchat. So Snap Incorporated, um, it's trending flat uh, over the last month. And then we see coming this week's trending flat again. And so we say 42 cents on sale at a $10.78 true value. So this one's on sale already and we've called out Snapchat, called this one out quite a bit over the last year. And this one, did pretty well. Um, no complaints with Snapchat. So let's zoom out just a little bit. And we'll go back over all the callouts. But here recently, um, we see Snapchat is really beaten up. Um, hit a low of 733 um, back when it had an earnings report uh, in the last quarter. And we saw it actually beat earnings. Um, it was expected to lose 18 cents per share. And it actually made 8 cents per share. So we see the latest earnings report, they expect to lose almost 10 cents per share. They actually made 14 cents. Um, we see the volume pick up. We see the price start to pull up as well. Um, this one is just attacking, is just attacked the SMA, the 180 day SMA, which is something I talk about a lot. This is a great sign. We want the price to attack the SMA. We want to see that happen. And we want to see it push through and, and start to spring above. And so this one's in a wave count of zero, so it's exactly where it should be on a monthly count. Um, and so let's look at price point zooming in. Um, we see, again, a little manipulation. I'm going short with this one this week. Um, I don't believe this one. I think I went short with this one. No, I'm going long with I'm sorry. I'm going long with Snapchat this week. 
Um, so I'm looking at 1005 is a great price point. Um, again, it's at 1036 now, and we'll see um, some pullback for sure. We see, again, a flag down here on the blue. And, and I think a quick return by Friday, um, you can see anywhere between 1036 to 1138. And so we see this one could come down. And I think you've got some un uncovered manipulation here at 1094. We've got uh, 50 million shares traded last Thursday. And then we have some, some more uncovered manipulation all the way going back to here at 34 million shares on uh, 2 9 February 9th, trading at $11.83. So at 10 05 is a great price point. Definitely wouldn't be surprised if it falls down a little lower, but start position here at 10 05 and then average down. I think again by Friday, you can get out at 10 37, you know, on the short week to 11 40. So that's about anywhere between three to about 13% uh, in this week. I feel like you can get. And you could hold this one a little longer again. Snapchat um, isn't going anywhere. They are starting to be become a little more profitable, it looks like, based on the earnings report. So moving on down the list, I've got Lyft uh, coming in flat this week. $1.65 on sale, true value of $12.93. Let's look at Lyft. And so this is a company um, that had earnings report last week, I believe. Um, I have never called out Lyft before. I've never um, scanned Lyft before um, this week. So this will be the first time I've scanned this company. And uh, so let's look at a one year, one day. So I'm out just a little bit more. And so we see uh, Lyft had a high of 4138, um, pretty much uh this 22nd of last year here on February. And this one has been uh, pretty much falling ever since then. Um, but you look at earnings report, first thing jumps out to you, this company has been losing money over and over. Their earnings reports have, getting, have been pretty ugly. So, you know, this is a pretty bad sign. So you got 58 cents um, loss per share on a project of 57. Um, they plan on losing 57 cents and they lost a dollar and eight. Um, they lost, uh, th they were planning on losing 38 cents per share and they lost a dollar 18. It's a telltale sign this company is not uh, managing their business right. Uh, 47 cents estimated on a dollar 61. That means they're not maintaining or managing their financials that they can't estimate whether they make money or not. They're so far away from their estimate to their actual, they're not doing a great job of understanding what their business is, what price points um, their business is, is, is coming in at and what financials they're making. So they, they're not doing a very good job. So it, you can see um, what the investors are thinking about Lyft um, with that being said. So I think there's a great short-term opportunity um, with a lot of manipulation as we see last week. So let's zoom in a little bit. And if you haven't um, learned me by now, if you listen to some of the videos, I like to key on manipulation and take advantage of those opportunities. And so we see a lot of manipulation come in right after earnings report. As I just mentioned, they had a pretty bad one. And on 210, 146 million shares were traded from the price point of 11.22 to 10.31, the day before that, you had 44 million shares traded all the way up to 17.08 and to 16.13. This one only trades, this stock only trades on average about 12 million shares. So we see a lot of manipulation happening here. Um, you see a resistance on the EMA. All the Williams alligators uh, lines are pointing down, momentum's pointing down, MACD's pointing down. It's in a wave count of zero, so it's really where it wants to be. Um, and so I think at twelve, at ten dollars and twelve cents, it's a great price point to get in and capitalize off the manipulation um, on the upside to about ten eighty three to around eleven sixty one by Friday. So anywhere between five and fourteen and a half percent. 
I believe in Gideon. I think there'll be a lot of anxiety and a lot of anxiousness around this stock to get in as cheap as they can. Um, I don't think this one will be a great long-term hold. It did just recently attack the SMA. It could come back and attack pretty soon, but I think you may have to hold it um, if it doesn't turn around pretty quickly in the next couple of weeks. So again, this one is a, this one's a high risk for this week, but I do think uh, with the low of 966 for the year, um, starting position at 10, 12 and averaging down isn't a great, um, isn't a bad idea and uh, definitely could get out of this one pretty quickly if it does turn around pretty quick. So that's my call out for lift this week is $10 and 12 cents. Moving on down the list, I have Kroger's. Uh, Kroger's moving at a slightly downtrend of a two, 32 cents on sale at true value of $44 and 32 cents. Uh, let's look at Kroger's. Kroger's is a company I called out last week. I've called out a couple, quite a few times this last, uh, this year already. So, um, here recently I've called Kroger's out, um, at 44.23 back, uh, second week of January, called out at 43.81. Neither one of these weeks, it came down to my price point. Got pretty close. Um, actually, on Friday, it did. Um, I'm sorry, actually, Monday, the next week, it did. Um, but I won't count that one. Um, but then we see last week, 4384 called this one out and actually came down to my price point one, two, three, four times. So four out of the five times last week, um, it came down to my price point. Um, so great opportunity there. Um, I don't believe my alerts came through on this one. I think I missed that on this one. I got in on uh, something else. I can't remember now uh, last week. So, but definitely opportunity this week at 43.21. I think by Friday, um, you definitely hold this one longer, but by Friday, anywhere between 43.69 at 1% or 44.74 at 3.5%. Uh, it's pretty realistic. Um, we do see this one resisting on the blue, which is the 13-day EMA. So um, one resistance there, another resistance there last week. And so uh, there's a great opportunity for this one to finally break through and um, kind of come through that 13-day EMA. Uh, we do have an earnings report here, looks like, on first week of March. So um, this one could be loading up for earnings. I'm not sure what earnings report would say or do for this stock. I'm not a fundamental uh, trader, so I don't know what their fundamentals looks like, but I do see a lot of opportunity with this one. And let's zoom out real quick. Um, we see this one again is uh, well below the 180 day SMA. It's well below, well below the cake range where the price wants to be. It's in a wave count of a minus one. And so, again, a lot of opportunity for this one to go up just based on all that being said. MACD looks good. Momentum looks pretty good. Um, the volume is still relatively low. I would expect a little tick up in volume for this one to really turn around. This one is a dividend stock at $0.26, cents and it did pay that out on the 14th of February. And, uh, and this one has been profitable over the last few earnings report, $0.88 cents per share. On the last one, and then in Q3 of last year, uh, 90 cents per share. So not bad. Um, so great opportunity for Kroger this week at 43.21. Next on the list, coming on down, is Hasbro. Uh, negative two trend, 26 cents on sale at a true value of $59.62. Let's go to the charts and look at Hasbro. Call this one out right before the holidays, Christmas. And this one turned around pretty nicely. Um, took a dip down uh, right before Christmas holidays. It came down to the 54.65 range. I called it out at 58.45. Actually hit that price on Thursday and Friday. Um, then it turned around pretty nicely. So uh, based on when I called it out to the high, Turn around about 13% in 26 days. Um, right now, this one is trading at 59.36. So a lot of volume kicked in here. We see, and we see the price uh, pulled up the very next uh, next couple of days after it. Again, 
volume is going to move first, and then you'll see the price is actually it's actually the reaction of the volume movement. And so um, we see this one is actually see MACD's moving down, and this one is actually in divergence. So this one's moving down. This is moving up. So this one's waiting to converge here soon. And so it looks like we've got an opportunity possibly this week. See the cross over here. MACD looks pretty good and the momentum as well. Um, this one at 56.98 looks like a really good price point. Um, it might get a little resistance. Um, again, this is going to be a rocky week. So if you get into 56.98, I think by Friday or very soon, early next week, 58.39 at 2.6%. Or coming back and touching the 13-day EMA at 60.57 at 6.5%. So can't really go wrong with Hasbro. It's in a great opportunity mode here uh, underneath the 188 SMA, again, underneath where the price wants to be. So again, these are great low-end uh, low stocks, high-value, high, high, high potential. Um, this one is another profitable company making $1.31 per share in its last earn, earnings report that it reported out last week. Um, they're giving out dividends at 70 cents per share. So Again, this one you can't go too wrong with uh, long term. So fifty six ninety eight is a great price point for me. Hasbro, and that's off a progression line of a low of fifty four sixty five from December twenty twentieth. All right. Next on the list, coming on down the chart some more. And again, I have these sorted by trends, so these are going to get uh, worse trends as I go down the chart. So this is a negative four trend, so trending down pretty strongly. Dollar uh, and ten cents on sale, which we should expect if it's trending down. Tyson Foods comes in at a true value of sixty two dollars and forty seven cents, and so shout out to my boy Daz for this one. Uh, I have never scanned Tyson's Foods. Uh, he had uh, definitely keyed me off on this one. Let me know, hey, check out Tyson's Food. I think they had earnings report a couple weeks ago or or maybe last week so never scan tyson food um so I'm gonna look at this one real quick uh one year one day and see where tyson's food um uh, how it moves not a bad one this week uh, so tyson's food has a high of 99 dollars 54 within the last year on 421 and we see this one above the cake range kind of pulled down very drastically. Looks like they had an earnest report and the price point pulled down after that. Uh, and earnest report looked pretty good at that time. They actually beat um, estimations. At, and uh, so their price points look really good on earnest report. So this company gives out 46 cents per share on dividends. And so we see this one's, uh, again, it fell down below the 180-day SMA has not returned to that level yet. Um, we see it try to attack and jump past it um, on the August 1st date. But here recently, we're seeing a little bit more volume pick up and we see uh, an attempt to attack the SMA uh, here on the 24th. A lot of manipulation. We see this one drastically pulled back down. And we see on earnings report that they just had um, they didn't meet expectations. They actually um, only made 85 cents per share is what they reported. See a lot of volume, 12 million shares uh, when they typically trade somewhere around the 2 million share range. So about six, six, six times as the shares that they normally trade. And those prices were ranging around the $61.14 range to the $60.52 range. So we see, if we zoom in, again, this one's well below where price wants to be. It's well below the 180-day SMA. Had a recent low of 59.38 on 12.22. So can't go too wrong with this one. This one is a profitable company, and we see a lot of uh, steady, um, steady trading happening over the last week. And it's $60.08. I don't think you can go wrong with Tyson excuse me, Tyson Foods, um, definitely wants to turn around and come back and touch off on uh, one of these SMAs. We've got the five-day, got the eight-day, and the 13-day. 
opportunities here. We've got uh, some uncovered manipulation at 3 million shares at 65.30. So definitely a great opportunity by Friday, or you can hold even longer. Uh, I believe by Friday, 62.04, which is about almost 3%. To 64.70, which is about 7.4%. So, uh, MACD is kind of rough here. You see, coming down, pull down pretty strong. The momentum is looking looking uh, a little better, and so we see this one is definitely um, not tracking because uh, the price is moving kind of flat. MACD is moving down, and we see the momentum kind of moving up. So this one's not tracking. So it's definitely trying to get on track. And we see this one is definitely, uh, it's already converged, but it's not a strong convergence. So I expect this one to make some drastic changes um, in price moves here in the next couple of weeks. So like Tyson's Foods this week at $60.08. Coming on down the list, and last but not least, is a company called Clearfield coming in at a trend of a six. Now, you'd ask, why are you calling out a company at a trend of a six? Well, I'll show you here in a sec. Um, this is a great opportunity this week, I believe. And so at $3.09, it's on sale. at a true, va true value of $64.50. I do not typically call out stocks trending low. Um, but here lately, I have been starting to call out a little more because it's a lot more buying opportunities with these stocks as there's a lot of stocks that are overpriced. And I like to find stocks that are underpriced and have a great opportunity of moving into another uh, level up. And so looking at Clearfield, Clearfield is a fiber optics um, a communication a cable company. So if anyone knows anything about stocks and stock market uh, or Internet or any kind of communication, fiber optics are key. So let's look at this company overall. Uh, earnings reports, they are profitable. Um, they are turning uh, 60 cents, 92 cents, dollar 22, um, a dollar. So uh, these this company is making money um, based on the earnings per share that they're reporting. Um, this one has been actually trending really strong. So if you look at the 180-day SMA, it's been definitely uh, going above and beyond that. Um, we see it went way above the cake range, hit a high of 134.90 on November 25th. And we see a low um, back on May 11th of 48.91. So if we pull from that low um, to where it is now, we see it definitely took a downturn. Um, a lot of volume starting to come in. And we see the downturn come, come in and happen. A lot of manipulation actually on the date of uh, January 11th. So here this this year, here recently, we see um, 1.2 million shares come in. Uh, this one typically trades anywhere around uh, 225 to 500,000. So not a heavy volume moving stock. So I wouldn't expect a lot of price action happening. Um, but we do see some, minute, um, some, some volume come in here over the last week. So I'm going to zoom in real quickly here. Uh, we see a lot of volume coming in after earnings report, and we see the buying in around the 59.85, uh, the 62.06 range. And so I think at 59.84, great, great price point. Again, I pulled that from the low and touching off here, I believe um, with the MACD in a position being below the midpoint, uh, still pulling up, momentum kind of looking flat here with an opportunity to pull up. Um, we see uh, the 180-day SMA is pretty flat here. It's moving right through the middle of the cake range. This one has a great opportunity to turn around. We see this EMA getting close to the green, has a great opportunity to turn around and by Friday be somewhere around the 62.06 to the 65.89 price range. Again, this one is a profitable company, so you could hold this one much longer. I feel confident at... Um, at that. So at 61.91, that's 3.4%. And at 66.04, that's about 10%. So can't go too wrong with this company. I think uh, a great opportunity. I've never scanned this company before. So it's the first time scanning it, but it looked really good. So 
again, a great opportunity to uh, definitely make some money uh, this week. So anyway, that's it for the uh, plays of the week, week eight. Uh, thank you for joining me. And again, if you know anyone who likes technical analysis, who wants some great price points for some great stocks, um, have them check out my channel, like, subscribe, like, subscribe and share. And uh, good luck, good luck trading this week. And again, look out for some more videos, plays of the week. Um, again, we're still working on some tips and tricks stuff so that I can present to help you guys out for anyone who's looking for some quick tips on uh, some technical analysis. So Again, thank you for joining me on this short week and good luck trading.